Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nick Burnham, I am a full-time videographer and today we're going to go ahead and go over my studio makeover. And I'll keep all my promises, don't you go away, just stay, just stay, just stay. So if you don't know who I am, I highly suggest subscribing as I teach people how to be successful and just grow their overall photography business. So today we're gonna go ahead and go over all the components that it took to complete this build. And also I'm gonna go ahead and link down in the description all the products. So if you wanna go ahead and check them out and buy them, you know, it's gonna be there. So with this whole overall build, I probably spent around $3,000 with the desk, PC, dual monitors, um, and just overall everything in general. Everything is not needed. This is solely because I wanted it. You don't have to spend nearly as much as money as I did to get the same results. I just wanted to go ahead and go overboard because I had the initial budget for it. So we're gonna go ahead and start this list off with the elephant in the room, which is this monitor right behind me. This monitor is a 49 inch gaming monitor made by Viotech. This monitor holds a 140 hertz refresh rate which is incredible for a size that big of a monitor but there comes to one downside with it yes it is a 144 hertz monitor but you can't overclock it unless it's brought down to about 120 which is a, not too much of a difference but if you are a professional gamer or you take gaming very seriously and you can notice those small things consider that when you are buying this monitor but with overall specs and overall cleanness i love this monitor it's the best thing I ever did for setups. I have no regrets when purchasing this thing because the overall landscape on this monitor is incredible. The dimensions on this thing is about 3820 by 1080. Fact check me on that guys. I will go ahead and um, go ahead and check that before I upload this video. So if it is wrong, uh, beware. So you're probably wondering why are you buying a 1080 monitor in 2019? That's just ridiculous. I think it's a waste of money. Hold on now. It is $850 after taxes, but the productivity and the gaming experiences that you get out of this are unmatched. Yes, you can uh, get a dual monitor set up with the same amount of, uh, I guess, dimensions wideness wise um, for about even half the price, $400, maybe even less like 300, but that's not what I wanted. It's a 49 inch monitor. So that's the size of like, I can't even fit that in frame. It's like this big. It's a productivity beast. I can edit just everything. I can probably see, if I have it zoomed out, I can probably see from a minute to about 14 or 15, which is incredible, even if there are videos on the timeline. Um, so with that just being said, it's a very, very good productivity monitor, but it's also very, very good at gaming as well. As you can see, just the field of view is just incredible. And when I'm gaming with this monitor, it's it's crazy because you just feel so immersed in the experience and it wraps around you and just brings you into a whole completely new world. Now, with that being said is, is it worth the $850? it's for you to decide. Me personally, I love the productivity um, of just being able to do whatever I want in Premiere Pro or even dual effect within Premiere um, and After Effects with the dynamic link and all that and just go ahead and just a whole bunch of multitasking. Um, it's just a beast at all of it. That's the reason why I got it. You may be different. You may not need it as much as I do, but I feel like when I have this monitor, I have so much more access to everything that I want with literally just one look or even just a head turn. Um, left to right and it's all there. So next up I have the monitor on top about right there. It's my 24 inch gaming Dell monitor. I'm not too sure if it's a gaming monitor, but I know it's a very, very crisp monitor that has everything that I need. The colors are true to self. And that's actually one of the reasons that I do have that monitor, even though uh, this monitor is huge. This monitor is very, very true to color. So when I'm editing photos, or even color correcting, that's what I use to see. Just because with this 49 inch monitor, the pixels are stretched out because I think it's 80 million pixels or something crazy like that. There are so many pixels on a wide screen that they have to be stretched out a bit. So it oversaturates the image just a tiny bit, but I want to have true colors. So that's why I use that. And all my playbacks are done with that monitor. So honestly, I don't even see it as a slight inconvenience. I just see it as another monitor to do whatever I want with it, but it is very helpful when I'm color correcting. 
It's currently sitting on a bootleg stand. I believe they are two tower candles. One is holding like a little utility box um, and the other one has like a little notepad to kind of keep it even. So beware, that is a do it yourself. You can obviously buy a stand, but I just wanted to do it now. So I made something quick and easy. So next time we have my video editing PC slash bit of gaming build, I'll put everything up here or one of these corners. And with that being said is, these specs are specifically put in to help me render faster and just overall workflow way better with this build. I believe it is a 32 gigabyte RAM, two sticks of 16, an MSI motherboard that I'm not too sure of. It'll be right here. It has a NVIDIA 1080 graphics card and a few other things that I will go ahead and put up there because I'm not too sure on the spot. But if you are a tech nerd and you really do want to know what I have in this PC, go ahead and make a comment down like, hey, Nick, I want to see what's in that PC. Could you please go? more in depth and I might make a video on it to help you guys out. So if you are getting into video editing, I highly suggest getting some parts that are in this PC just because it is a video editing computer, not really solely meant for gaming, um, more or less on the side of video editing, but I highly recommend it because it helps me and is just a overall beast of a computer. So some of the parts are a bit expensive. So depending on your budget, you may want to find alternatives to that. I think I ended up spending about $1,100 on this computer, which isn't too bad. I know people have like $2,000 computers, but solely I really did not need it because that is more or less for gaming. Just don't really need to spend that much on a computer. If you're not really, really going in depth with, you know, streaming and just overall like hard games that are going to make your PC strain. So next up, we have the custom desk. Um, I believe it is 75 inches by like 25 or something. Um, I did not build this myself. I bought it off a person on Facebook. So shout out to them. You guys really saved my butt on this one. This desk is huge, but this everything that I have on this desk literally fills it up. So um, yeah, it, it's crazy because it, it's a very, very big desk, but you know this monitor itself takes up almost half of it. So that alone tells you the size of it. It comes with some drawers. Um, I keep my Xbox controllers, you know, my journals, uh, whenever I'm scheduling appointments, stuff like that. Um, it's overall just very helpful to have things right by my side when I'm working. So one downside thing to this studio is the wires. I really didn't take the time to get like a rack or anything. I sort of just threw this together, was super excited about it and just wanted to get this out the way. So wire management is not on point just yet, as you can see with the LED lights and just everything not too bad, but can be way better. So with that, you know, we're gonna go ahead and improve on that. We're just gonna go ahead and do that down the road. So next up, we have my Snowball microphone. It is not the best mic, but it gets the job done when it comes to audio and remixing things. I believe it's like 40, $50 or something like that. So it is a do it yourself arm. I believe that you can get it in anywhere from like Lowe's or something like that. And you just put the parts together, but that's very useful because it stretches over the monitor and I can do any type of voiceover that I really need to when I'm editing. So I have that sitting behind the desk right next to the window and I can kind of just hide it behind the desk whenever I need to or, or bring it back out whenever I need it. So next up we have, uh, yeah, this corner right here. Woo, yeah, right there. Those are wakeboards. I am a big fan of wakeboarding and it's just a very, very fun sport that I love to do. So the top one is a board that I got from my buddy a while back, probably about three years ago. He gave me his board that he didn't use anymore, which is I'm very thankful of because it allowed me to wakeboard whenever I wasn't with him and just overall get better at the whole sport in general. So a couple months later, I actually ended up investing in my own board. It's a Hyperlite something. I'm not too sure of it, but it is a very, very good board when it comes down to cutting waves, jumping, um, and just overall shredding in general. And the part you guys have been waiting for. Yeah, it's not too exciting. So that corner is a work in progress. I have some canvases that I wanted to put up, but I just couldn't find the stuff to put them up. So yeah, oh well, the wall is blank for right now, but they will have some, uh, it's like a world map canvas that will be up there in a later video. So with this corner, it's really not too much. It's really not designated for uh, anything special. It's like my charging station, my Xbox station, as well as watching TV when I want to. I use it to charge my drone for my camera and pretty much anything whenever friends come over, you know, they have their own space if they want a game, this and that, they need to do homework, just anything, you know, there's always a great space for you guys to come and just chill. So with that setup, you know, it's a work in progress. So we're just going to go ahead and scoot that out the way. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's because this is my dream setup. I'm wondering what I'm going to name it. Maybe like super ultra dream setup. 
but I think that won't be good for the algorithm, so we may end up changing that. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you highly enjoyed this video or even just a little bit, you know, throw that thumbs up because it really helps me grow my channel and overall just make more videos like this. But also don't forget to subscribe because I will also be releasing major tips and just, you know, just a lot of educational videos that I can... <laughs> but yeah, don't forget... Oh my God, this is so hard, guys. But yeah, I will be releasing tutorials and just overall videos that help everyone out with their photography journey, but also some pretty cool tutorials that are coming in the future. If you guys are also wondering, I just released a video on how I edit and my entire workflow that goes through my mind when I'm editing. So don't forget to check that out in the, I just pointed, wait, it was, I just pointed right here, but it's right here. Yeah, I just, <laughs> so there will be a card right here that is a link to my other video. I just released a workflow video. So I highly suggest uh, checking that out if you are new to photography. Even if you are an intermediate and advanced photographer, you know, it still kind of helps to see people's uh, perspective when they are editing a video. So I highly suggest checking that out. But once again, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.